Tell me how that came down. Why did you guys break up? I was kicked out when they wrote a couple of those songs that, that they have on their new records, and I refused to sing them because I didn't think they were good enough. Okay. And I didn't think they were as good as 18 in Life. Okay. And I, I said, you guys, this is not 18 in Life. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're hearing. But I'm not singing it. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I can't... They should let you do what you want. I didn't get in this business to sing music that I don't like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get in a band and I'm going to play a song that I think sucks. But it's not Sebastian Bach. I... When I sing a song, I love it. I can't, I can't sing a song that I don't love. Mm -hmm. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried in Skid Row when they would come up with an idea that I didn't like. And they would go, come on, man, just give it a shot. And I would go to the microphone, and I'd go, okay, be a good guy. And I'd go, da, 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 da. and then my mouth would shut. And it'd be not in my control. And they would go, what's wrong? And i go, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I, I don't like it. Like, it's just not, I can't sing a song that I don't like. But they got mad when I was, like, on the cover of Rolling Stone. Like, I felt bad. They, they made me feel like I did something wrong because they weren't on the cover with me. And I'm like... I'm on the cover of Rolling Stone. Like, this is our band. Like, shouldn't we be happy about this? But it was like a bad thing. It was like, a, it's like I did something wrong. Well, how fucked up is that? You're in love now. <laughs> Tell me about it. I met her on Twitter. Um, I got divorced in December. And um, I had seen pictures of Minnie online. And, and I was like, Jesus Christ, she's so pretty. And I said to myself, if I could have any girl in the world right now, uh, who would it be? And I went through names in my head, like Karma Electra and some other chicks, you know, that are famous. And I go, the one I really want is this girl. <laughs> That's who I really want. I, we have to tell everybody watching this, this is three in the morning. Okay, look, okay this is not the normal interview hour. <laughs> she did a tweet, it said, in vino veritas which means in wine there is truth. So I tweeted her, ba I tweeted her back, uh, well, if there's truth in wine, the truth is, is I want to have a glass of wine with you. <laughs> I might read comments on, online like, why are you with this chick or whatever, from other girls, but none of these other girls love me. Like, none of them watch movies with me at night and fucking hold Well, they don't me. get a chance. <laughs> You're with this girl. <laughs> but no, There's a lot of girls she, out there that want to watch movies with you, Sebastian. But she's the one that actually did it. So was it love at first sight? Oh, oh yeah. But uh, after the Twitter. Well, yeah, because like when you're when you're like meeting somebody online, you don't know if it's like some dude in a trailer park <laughs> fucking just like with a fake picture or something, yeah. right? Was there a time when you were a skid row and you're like, wow, I really made it. I'm really happy. I'm a rock star now. Yeah, um, the first time I ever got like an arena to stand up, uh, it was a sh Chicago Rosemont Horizon opening for Bon Jovi on the Bon Jovi tour, New Jersey tour, and uh, we played Chicago, and we had been on tour for like a month, and I was only 20 years old or 21, and I said, everybody get the fuck up like this, and they actually did it, like the whole arena, and... I turned around to the guys, I go, Jesus Christ, I go, this, that was the moment where I felt, really, really, really felt, when I, when I, I just go, I want to see everybody stand up, I just went like this, with my hand, and the whole arena stood up, 20,000 people, mm -hmm. that was the exact moment, oh. when I felt we were going to make it really big. Do you have any regrets as you look back, either with the band or in your career? Well, yeah, I, you know, I regret going to jail. <laughs> Which time? Well, oh, well yeah. all of them. <laughs> you know. Is it fate that you know this deal happened in where you had a flood there and uh, where you lived? It's biblical. It's I, I don't know. It's very hard to talk about. It's not easy. <sighs> Were you you weren't there when it happened? You just no. You know. If I was, I'd been dead. I mean, it was like, it was, you know, 
Well, another Halloween costume. Um, a lot of the words on this record are, are prophetic. Like, they're like art imitating life, life imitating art. Mm -hmm. There's a line in the, there's a song called As Long As I Got the Music, Nothing Bothers Me. And uh, it goes, broken, stranded, I don't care. Broken, stranded, I don't care. It's like, stranded it means having no home. Like, it's like, a lot of the words in the record, like the first verse, of kicking and screaming goes an original crazy in a world that I've never known. My life is so rearranging. Where you end up, can you ever know? It's like it's like I sang that, and God goes, "Oh, really? Boo!" <laughs> it's like it's like unbelievable. A lot of the lyrics on the record like fit my life like exactly, but I found it very hard to leave that home because it was the only home I'd ever known my whole life. I lived there for 20 years. So just the building was like, you know, my sanctuary, my refuge. So to lose that was very emotional and, and heavy, but, but in, in, in a sense free, freeing as well. My new record is Kicking and Screaming and it's at number 68 on the top 200 Billboard album chart, which is the highest I've been on that chart in 16 years. So, so I've established myself finally as a, as a recording artist, so, as a solo recording artist. I, my old band has not had a record on that chart at all since I've been out, and I'm, I'm on the charts. So, uh, Angel Down debuted on the Billboard album chart 190, so 68 is like a fucking huge improvement. That's like really good. That's... The next record could, could be conceivably in the top 20. Like, I could, I really did it with this album. It's, it's been doing very, very well for me. It feels really good because I've worked really hard to establish myself. Nick Sterling deserves all the credit. Is it wrong to say you're making a comeback now? Um, well, no, I, I, I am definitely on the charts, yeah. Like, I haven't been on the, in the top 100 album chart since 1995. <laughs> like Subhuman Race was the last album I had that was up that high to chart. But. So I'm def that's definitely a comeback, like for sure. But I think it's because I have real management, uh, Rick Sales management, I have a real record company, uh, Frontiers Records, that gave me the budget to make a real record with a real producer. Like Bob Marlette is a one of the best producers in rock and roll to shine down and all these bands and, and uh, so they, they pulled out all the stops for me.